Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Simon. I'm with the Unison team. I work on all of our UIs, the local UI that ships with UCM, the, the share UI and the cloud UI and our websites. I do both front end and front engineering and design. So yeah, today we are going to be previewing a, a vision of the this thing we're calling the graphical UCM, which is a, a rich UI. Where's the, so UCM, if you are unfamiliar, is our Unison code base manager. It's a CLI tool and sort of the primary tool you use to work with, with Unison. And so this will be an exploration of a variant of that, not a replacement, but something you can use alongside that is a lot more an editor, say. With that being said, quick disclaimer, this is very, unfinished stuff and early visions very likely to change things are just been dreamt up and might not be possible or will be possible in some other manner when we actually go to implement it what you'll see here is figma mockups not real implemented uis but they do have a bunch of thought in with it let's peer into one of the possible futures of a graphical and rich ucm yeah, so this is the UI, and it is inspired by editors such as Vim, Zed, VS Code, and Helix. And we'll spend pretty much the rest of the talk looking at these mocks. Yeah, this would be a lot of that, of staring at this particular window. In the top title bar, we'll have these contextual navigation elements for picking a project, a branch, and for interacting with the history of, of the, the working chain set. In the top right corner, there is users, user navigation and, and common controls, like splitting the sort of the window, getting split panes, adding definition, searching. The sidebar has code-based navigation is not unlike the, the share UI or the local UI, although we do want to make it a little bit better by actually indicating what is open and if the definition has had a change compared to the last committed chain set. And yes, the sidebar will be re resizable, uh, which is not something the current sidebar is, and it's just not great, but we'll make that happen. <laughs> and there will be split panes. They are also resizable. This is, of course, something we, a lot of us are familiar with in day-to-day -day programming, being able to view code side-by-side, -side, and especially being able to view docs and code side-by-side -side is super useful. Um, and we're going to support themes. What I'm showing here is the, the dark unison theme. Here's a variant of uh, a light one, but there will be custom themes will be supported. So people can configure this like their favorite editor. Okay. Let's look more closely at one of these definition cards. So the sort of the panes here have cards that are open. This is a lot like what the cards we see on share and in the local UI, but these have a lot more controls associated with them. You can, by the way, you can navigate this just like you can today with the arrow keys and HA KNL. The intention here is to make a proper tool that is fully keyboard navigatable. Let's look at one of these definitions. We'll have tabs underneath the title to switch between the code, the docs, and the tests. And on, on the right corner, there'll be controls for dealing with the card itself. You can collapse it, you can close it. And then there are these little, three little dots here. Uh, I'll show that in a slide later. We have dependence and dependencies uh, and any sort of change indicator that happened locally, and then, of course, the hash of the definition. If you were to click this little edit button, just a little writing pad there, you would go into edit mode, which will interact with an underlying UCM. The UCM that we know today will be powering all of this, and there will be like a, a live interaction with that, and you would get type checking errors and a summary of the changes you're currently making. And you can, of course, save or discard. If we click that, those little three dots, other sort of secondary actions will appear moving, renaming, deleting, and viewing the history of this one definition. These will also be keyboard navigatable. If we click the test tab, we can see and run the test associated with the definition. We will also have more of a global run all the tests for the project. I haven't designed that, but we for sure will have that. Okay. If we click this play button and it's a runnable definition, 
which we will determine based on the signature and we can run it and, and get the output. Here is, a, if this is straight from the cloud start project and just the deploy function for the counter example. Cool. We can click this dependence button, by the way, on the, when you're outside of the run or edit mode, and that will show a list of dependencies. We have an early mock of this as well going, being worked on for share. So it's not too different than what will appear there and you can search them. This is just an example from base as opposed to that counter deploy one, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay. So this back to the, so the main UI here, if we look on the right, I've put an example of a library definition. Library definitions are stuff that you've imported into your lib uh, namespace. They're your dependencies. And when you view definitions from a library, they will be marked as such. And the docs tab will be the default one selected for you, seeing that's probably what you're interested in. And it, but it will also show the signature as it does here. So yeah, hopefully th this will make it more easy to determine whether or not something is coming from your own code base or a dependency. So let's talk more about the keyboard shortcuts. The will be sequence shortcuts, uh, a lot of them prefixed with a uh, letter. So in this example here, I've hit P on a keyboard and that brings up shortcuts for the project and branch part of the sort of the experience. And if you've ever used Helix, this is a very similar UI affordance in Helix that I thought was pretty cool. And yeah, you can then interact with these either with the mouse, but obviously you probably want to type the next, the next key to, to select an option. So let's explore that by hitting H for history. So this is a history view, a mix between the current ref log and the history commands in UCM with the added difference of being able to give a commit message to a chain set. So that's what's shown here on the, so the left hand pane in this modal. And then if you haven't given it a commit message, it will uh, indicate that and you have these uncommitted changes, and then you can view a detailed view of those on the right, if you select them. And you can compare to the previous uh, hash. And this is a, I didn't have time to make this example better. I apologize, but imagine this being two different versions of text extra starts with, and these with blogs being other definitions that were changed as part of this work. This will be pretty much exactly like the diffing experience on share that we currently have. And you'll of course be able to change which hashes you're comparing is in this top, top area. Okay. So keyboard shortcuts, we showed one with P you could imagine we having one with D that does, that has like definition ones, maybe W for workspace. If you want to add a split or move a card to a different split, for instance, but they can be hard to remember and learn, even though we will try to enforce them in as many places as we can throughout the UI. We, but we will also have a command palette, which is a very popular lately where you type often it's command K. If you're on a Mac control K, maybe on other machines and a big autocomplete type ahead, uh, a way of executing commands. This will look like that in, in, in the sort of the graphical UCM view will suggest the sort of the most uh, likely commands up top, but you would be able to autocomplete and search for definitions based on type and all the stuff that you can do right now in both share and the local UI. So this will be a one stop shop for all of that. If you have a definition in focus in the, the main workspace area, the command palette will be contextual based on that. And the commands that it will suggest are, are going to be based on you having selected a definition. Here's showing what the commands might be that you would want to do with that. Cool. And finally, sometimes you might want access to the actual UCM CLI and just issue commands directly. And we, we can also support that with this, with a sort of a CLI pane. If you click this uh, little CLI button in the bottom right corner, it will show a little pane where you can work with the project as you're used to now in the terminal-based CLI.